This is a second-hand lawn tractor that I bought last year for moving things around Century Wood. It was in good working order but had some patches of surface rust and the front tyres were flat. It was sold without a working cutting deck which was fine for me as the ground is too rough here to use one really. This is how it looks now after the maintenance and improvements I did over the winter to turn it into what you might call a wood tractor. I'm going to talk through the various changes and then we'll go for a drive and look for some fallen branches to sort out. The first thing is this brush bar at the front. It's made from two inch scaffolding tube and is bolted onto the chassis. During the summer the rides have a lot of vegetation like nettles and cow parsley, sometimes with fallen branches hidden in, in amongst them. The brush bar is to push all those stringy stems out of the way before they get tangled up in the wheels. I've made sure there is enough clearance that you can still get the bonnet oak fully open, which is a problem you sometimes see with other designs on YouTube. That was a pheasant just then, by the way. Another thing I added was my own circuit, driven by the 12 volt battery that normally just runs the starter motor. This switch isolates the circuit so you don't flatten the battery, and there's a voltmeter so you can see how the battery's doing. Then there's a 12 volt car accessory socket for things like phone chargers and I added a wire basket on the bonnet just above. The tyres are now a traditional tractor setup, lug tyres pointing forward on the driven wheels at the back and rib tyres for steering at the front. And yes, that's the bottle holder from a bicycle. Next we've got this basket that I welded together from one inch steel tubing and put on the back. As we'll see later, it's for things like chainsaws and toolboxes. For larger loads you need a trailer and that means some kind of hitch on the tractor like this. Originally it just had a hole in the bottom lip of the back plate of the chassis. That's okay but not very versatile and not that strong either. These are the pieces I put together to do a better job. Top left is a combined tow ball and tow pin hitch and then the original back plate from the tractor and a big 4mm steel plate to strengthen it. Put it all back together on the tractor and it looks like this. Now let's attach this garden trolley that I've been using at the wood since 2008. This picture shows the drive belt which runs from the engine at the front to the combined gearbox and differential at the back, the transaxle. With no mower deck it's quite exposed and this next picture showed what happened on one of the test drives last year. A stick got dragged into the rear, pull rear pulley and popped the drive belt off. To stop this happening again we need some kind of skid plate, like this. I left a gap to make it easier to clear out any bits of stuff that get in there still. It's made of 3mm steel sheet. The plantation poplar trees often drop branches onto the rides. Every so often I go walking with a chainsaw to clear them, but let's drive instead. Just the tractor, no trolley.
in neutral already, no need for the choke since the engine is already warm. And off we go. You can see the brush bar pushing over some of the nettle stems from last year here. Open the throttle a bit more. These stumps are plantation poplars I felled years ago to create this open space and let more light in. One cow parsley stem. Another cow parsley. I'd expected to find more fallen branches, to be honest. Ok, here's one on the side of the ride. I wouldn't like to catch myself on that once the nettles are six foot high in the summer.
pieces of branch are still on the edge of the ride, so I'll move them out of the way. The poplars aren't great for firewood and they're not very straight. It's not really worth cutting them up and splitting them and drying them for firewood when I have hazel as a much better alternative. The rest of the ride here is clear too. This time of year it can be hard to tell where the ride is, but it's the route that doesn't have branches on the ground and has a clear path without clumps of hazel stems. All in all I'm very pleased with how the tractors turned out and it's already making it easier to move things around. I'm going to make some more videos about using it in the wood, especially as part of firewood harvesting. If you want to see more of these videos about managing the wood and buildings like the log cabin and the drying bar, please subscribe. I should also say that I was inspired to get attracted by videos by Maximus in the UK and by Eric at Farpoint Farms in North Carolina. I'll put links to their videos and others that helped with the tractor rebuilding process in the show notes on YouTube.